Hello and welcome to the GX podcast, the world's first podcast focused on government services and their future. In this podcast, we talk about everything related to government excellence, government service design and delivery, GovTech, and citizen engagement. Join us for insightful interviews and conversations every month. Visit us online at gx.ae. Hi, and welcome to this special episode of the GX podcast. And we're talking with Jane Wiseman, who played such a big part in the recent documentary film, GX Now. Jane, welcome to the podcast and the video cast. I am so happy to see you again. And I'm happy to see you, Ian. So it's been incredible over the past month or so after the documentary GX Now has released. It's on Amazon Prime, it's on YouTube, it's on Vimeo, it's on multiple different platforms, and it's really been well received because of all the insights that people who are in there, people like yourselves, have shared. Let's do a quick recap on uh, maybe some of the experiences that you had working with us on the film, and how has the world changed from when we filmed, which was uh, almost a year ago, to now. So tell me a little bit of your experiences with the GX program, because you've been part of that from day one. Right. So first of all, the launch of the GX program was just so exciting to be with other people from around the globe who care passionately about the same issue of making government more customer responsive, more engaging, more more in service to the public needs. It was just wonderful to be part of that launch. And then to answer your question, what's changed in the world? You know, in a way, everything's changed with COVID, but in a way, nothing has changed in that public servants, many got into it so that they could solve problems to make people's lives better. And the global pandemic has really made it so much both more important that they do that work and more powerful. And in some ways, they're just doing what they've always done which is to solve problems. And whether it's, you know, so the city of Long Beach in California is one of our best examples in the US of first it was um, of getting testing out and making sure it was in all the most vulnerable neighborhoods. And now their vaccination, you know, they're one of the fastest to get the vaccine out. They were first to do one of these mega sites. They did a blast in a handful of days. They got 15,000 doses out and not one leftover dose that had to be thrown out. They've now got 58% of their seniors vaccinated. And it's not like it was magic. It was basic problem solving of committed public servants. They were creative, you know, they, it's a city where the beaches were closed. And so they redeployed lifeguards to be part of their testing program and to be part of their vaccine program. And, you know, something, a simple common sense innovation like that, it's been an accumulation of many good ideas that are what are creating this wonderful wave of government improvement in the COVID era. I think it's been such a big lesson for governments worldwide and everybody's kind of in this program to accelerate, to amplify, to be agile, to do all these things that governments need to do. And that's a great example you just shared. Look at Israel, look at the UAE. They're vaccinating a lot of people and they're doing whatever is needed to be done. So I think governments have had a really great learning curve throughout the the last year's one year one year experience dealing with COVID-19 as an emergency. This makes me think, what is in store for the future, right? We the film kind of captured the essence of where governments should invest, what governments should do. Let's fast forward maybe 10 years from now or five or 10 or 15 years from now. How can governments be ready for events like this? How can governments change the experience they're delivering in circumstances like this if it happens again? So I think there are three things. One is basic problem solving, which so many public servants are already good at it. But I think if we can grow that capacity, it'll be good. Another thing is data. And the third thing is data literacy and the ability to take action from data. But when we think about data, governments are all being measured now on how many people have you tested? What's your testing rate? You know, the dashboards that are being used to drive decisions around, is it safe to let people go back into movie theaters and to gyms and to restaurants? Data has become the lifeblood of decision-making in the COVID era. And I think that's wonderful. I do think we need to continue to grow the ability of public servants to consume and act on data. 
And this is not unique to the public sector. The private sector, the most recent survey of the Fortune 1000 companies showed that 30% of companies do not have a data strategy. 24% of companies are not changing data culture. And the biggest challenge there is data literacy. And the same survey of corporations, 92% say when a data project fails, it's not about the technology. It's not about the tools and the systems. It's about the people. So I think that, you know, when you ask what's going to be different 10 years from now, I really hope that we will take this moment and learn from it that data is powerful. And we need to equip everyone, not just the governor, not just the mayor, not just the president. Everyone in government needs to be able to take action based on numbers. Yeah. And, you know, there are many newer things that I think are being explored right now. For example, many governments have already rolled it out and many are going to roll out our Uh, the digital passports, right? The digital COVID-19 passports, the vaccination passports, if you will, which can track who has had the vaccine, that can track where, what level of vaccination are you at, and so on and so forth. What are your thoughts on incorporating technology like this within government? And what would you say would be a success factor for this for let's say an international rollout where everybody can exchange this information, right? Because this is a a global pandemic and people want to travel internationally as well. What are your thoughts? How do you see this? Yes. So I have two thoughts. One is the importance of interoperability. And here in the U.S., we have layers of government. We've got the federal government, we've got state governments, we've got county governments, we've got municipal governments. And then we also have districts even within government. So we've got 90,000 units of government in the United States. And so if you think about a passport that says, I've been vaccinated, I'm safe. How do you get all those levels of government just within one country to be on the same platform? It's mind boggling. So I think that's gonna take a lot of planning. But I think the other piece that's really critical about this is trust. And we in the US are seeing vaccine refusal rates even in, uh, I'm shocked to see that even healthcare providers are saying, no, thank you, I don't want the the vaccine. So I think the digital passport is gonna require people both trusting the government to give them a vaccine and then trusting the government with their data for the passport. And I think that's something that we can't just assume. We need to think about what are the reasons, you know, and in the U.S., part of it is a racial issue. We have racial and ethnic differences in who got hit hardest by both job losses and getting the virus. So this is something that our country, the U.S., really has to wrestle with the haves and have nots of both the impact of the virus and the recovery. You know, what we're seeing now, there are low-income minority neighborhoods where the vaccine clinic there, it's all white people who are showing up. And it's because of the fact that you have to have a computer, you have to have the time to, you know, somebody I know spent four hours online trying to get a vaccine appointment. You know, so this growing divide between the haves and have nots is um, exacerbated. Yeah. And um, so I think about, back to yeah. about digital government, digital government is amazing. And we have seen dramatic increases. You know, the, the city of Miami yeah. overnight put up, you know, dozens and dozens of government services. You couldn't come into city hall, but the chief innovation and data officer there made it happen that you could get, get your transactions done online and cities all over the U.S. Yeah. are doing the same thing. Digital government is growing leaps and bounds. Yeah. We've seen more in the last year than we've seen in five years before that. And it's amazing. Absolutely. But it does require that we keep up to date with the willingness of the public to engage with government. Of course. And in the U.S., I mean, there's some really amazing success stories. In the U.S., you now have a new administration, you have a new government, and the agenda of the new government is a little bit different from the from the previous one with respect to digital transformation, technology. Can you shed a little bit light on some of things that you think are important, if you can? Oh, gosh, everything. I'm so excited about the new administration that there's a renewed focus on data and science. Every agency now has to have a science advisor. And we're going to have our, at the federal level, embedded in decision making is what does the science say? What are the facts? You know, what's the evidence? And so it's really a tremendous time of opportunity for all the good in government to get more attention and for public servants to be able to do what they what they are passionate about, which is making 
services better for the public. Absolutely. And I think this is going to impact not just the U.S., but kind of make a change somehow or set an example globally. So everybody's looking at the U.S. to to do some things differently and kind of, you know, embrace this digital transformation revolution. Jane, thank you so much for being part of GX Now, the documentary, for being part of the GX initiative by the UAE government and the thought leadership that's happening because of that. In the film, we have Estonia, the US, we have the UK, Azerbaijan. There's so many different examples and thought leaders like yourselves in the documentary sharing their perspective. The documentary is available at gxnow.com and also on uh, leading the video platforms and video on demand platforms. Jane, any last messages for our viewers? I guess my final message would be that I am so hopeful for the future because I'm so inspired by the commitment of public servants who are still working. You know, when I see people, public school teachers, first responders who have to be out there. Well, you know, you, you and I do our jobs from a computer yeah. in the privacy of our own homes and protected from all kinds of germs. But the public servants who are out there every day giving their best, I just am so inspired by them. And I'm hopeful that the future will be safer and also more driven by data, digital, by innovation, creativity, and the power of ideas and momentum. So I'm excited about the future. Same here. I'm super excited for things to open up and for us to see where we can go. Thank you so much, Jane. It's been a pleasure having you on the podcast again. You take care and uh, we'll definitely be in touch. Great. Good to see you. Thanks. Bye. Take care. Thank you.